I'm going to show you how to make a homemade protein bar that's really delicious and it's very easy to make. And you can actually keep it in the refrigerator or the freezer um, and then take it out when you need it and have it right after a meal. So if you wanted to learn how to make that, you can fast forward to that section at the end of this video. But I want to spend a little bit of time on something very, very important that has to do with reading labels and really identifying if something is healthy or not. Now, when we talk about keto friendly, all we're talking about is, is that product less than 50 grams of carbohydrate? It has nothing to do with the type of carbohydrates, okay? As long as you're below 50 grams of carbs, you're good. Even if those carbs are sugar, if it's less than 50 grams, it's keto friendly. But I wanna differentiate healthy keto from just keto friendly, because I believe that some of these keto friendly products are uh, not safe because you should really know some of these ingredients that they're sneaking in these different products. So I'm gonna show you uh, this one right here. Um, you'll see this Lily's, no, this is not a protein bar, but it's Lily's crispy rice, dark chocolate bar, okay? So it says here, certified gluten-free. It says stevia sweetened, no sugar added. Boy, that sounds pretty good. Less sugar, sweet life. But the most important thing to do is to look at the ingredients underneath the supplement facts. This thing right here, you read that right there and it says unsweetened chocolate, chicory root, which is fine. And then they get into dextrin. What is dextrin? That's a synthetic fiber. And then it has erythritol. Then we have cocoa butter, organic uh, crispy brown rice. Okay. What is that? Well, it's organic brown rice and organic rice syrup. Okay. That is not healthy keto, okay? So right there, you don't want to consume this product. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the stevia products, like stevia in the raw, for example, has this filler of maltodextrin. Maltodextrin, as I talked about in a recent video, is probably one of the worst ingredients that you can consume because how it's rated on the glycemic index is like way, way higher than actual sugar. It's like between, I think, 106 and 136, okay? And sugar is like 74. So it will really spike your blood sugars. Now, there's a couple other ingredients I want to bring your attention to. Um, a lot of these new um, synthetic fibers or man-made fibers that are not really from um, food like you would think are now being promoted as helping your blood sugars, like the, like the soluble corn fiber, AKA resistant maltodextrin. So this is really confusing to people because you have the maltodextrin, which is like the sugar, which by the way, is not listed under sugars. It's just classified as a carbohydrate, now being called a resistant maltodextrin, okay? So basically what they do is they're changing the chemistry of the carbohydrate being a polysaccharide to a fiber. There's not a lot of research that you can find on this. Uh, it's a fairly new thing that was created. And so I don't know about you, but I don't like to jump into this new ingredient that's synthetic and that's highly processed with certain chemicals and solvents and high heats, and then think it's really, really safe until all the safety studies have been done and maybe a long-term study to really see, is it really safe? I mean, we already know the regular maltodextrin is really bad. Um, this new resistant uh, maltodextrin, the jury is not out yet because it's a very new product. But the problem is if you label it as the soluble corn fiber, um, you don't even know it's resistant maltodextrin. And they also have another one that's called tapioca starch or cornstarch. Well, that's also resistant maltodextrin. So they can make maltodextrin out of a lot of things. They can make it out of corn, wheat, potato, um, all sorts of things. And so I'm going to highly recommend that you avoid anything with soluble corn fiber, uh, tapioca fiber, um, maltodextrin, resistant maltodextrin, as well as dextrin and dextrose and uh, other sugars. Now, let's talk about just these, these uh, bars that you would buy, right? They may be protein bars or just they might be keto-friendly bars. Let's start with uh, Ideal Protein. I don't know if you've heard about that company, but uh, if you read the label, um, the first ingredient is soy protein isolate. That's a, a very processed 
fractionated protein product um, with hexane, which is a solvent. And uh, it's just not a natural type of protein that I would want in my body. And they also use maltodextrin, sucralose, which is the type of sugar that they added a chlorine molecule. And there's a lot of issues with that type of sugar. So I'm not going to recommend that. And then they also use a modified cornstarch, right? In this so-called weight loss uh, bar, not to mention synthetic uh, vitamins. So the quality of ingredients is so low. It is definitely not considered healthy keto. Ideal protein is a program with packaged foods. Um, you can have snacks. So they're not doing intermittent fasting. It is low carb, but the quality of carbs are not what I consider quality and it's low fat. So you may lose weight for sure, but from my observation, you're not gonna look that healthy. And they have like these different phases, phase one, two, three, and four. And phase four is basically a maintenance where you, you can start to bring back in these carbohydrates. So I really don't even understand the concept because you're gonna do this, lose the weight, and then you're gonna go back to your old ways. Well. I mean, I think people think if they get the weight off, then they'll just keep it off, right? Well, not if you go back to what you've been eating. So if you haven't heard this philosophy yet, I'll say it again. It's not lose weight to get healthy. It's get healthy to lose weight. And the way you get healthy is you consume healthy ingredients. All right, now let's talk about SlimFast. Now there's two different um, types of products that SlimFast is putting out there right now. Um, they're regular weight loss products, and then they have the keto products, okay? Now, of course, the regular slim fast products are just loaded with sugar and, and really poor ingredients, but their keto products also have some ingredients that I don't like, and I'm gonna list them right now. Isomalto oligosaccharides, okay, uh, from tapioca. That's one of their ingredients. At one time, I did recommend it, but I don't recommend it anymore because it was spiking people's blood sugars. And of course, they also use the soluble corn fiber. And just so you know, the reason why they use it is because it really uh, helps the texture of that product. And then they add some tapioca starch or corn starch. And then we have the Quest bars, okay? Now in the Quest bars, they have the soluble corn fiber again, right? Which is resistant maltodextrin. And they also use a sweetener called sucralose which is a sugar that has an extra chlorine molecule, which creates a lot of other issues, which I will have to do a video on that topic at some point. And then lastly, okay, the Atkins bars, okay? The Atkins bars, wow, if you take a look at those ingredients, you have um, polydextrose, okay? Which is a sugar that's very high in the glycemic index. They put in maltitol as a sweetener. It's the worst sugar alcohol that you can use. It's definitely gonna spike your blood sugar. So the next time you buy a keto-friendly bar, read the ingredients, okay, before you buy it. Now, this next part is very, very important, especially if you haven't seen my last video on maltodextrin. But in the way maltodextrin is classified is not as a sugar. It's classified as a total carbohydrate. So this is a little loophole that certain companies use when they say that less than one gram of sugar because the maltodextrin is not classified as sugar. It's a carbohydrate. So you're not going to find it in the sugar um, amounts. So that also goes with corn syrup, okay? So you can have corn syrup and lots of maltodextrin and be less than one gram of sugar, regardless of how much of that is in the product. It'll be under the carbohydrates, but not the sugar. That is why reading this label, especially the sugars right here, it's not as important as reading the type of carbohydrate or sugar, which is down here in the ingredients. All right, let's now dive into how to make your own protein bars, okay? So this is the ingredients, okay? You're gonna be getting a bowl and you're gonna mix these ingredients together and then you're gonna form these little bars and then you're gonna put them in the freezer, okay? In the freezer. Now you could also put them in the refrigerator if the freezer is too solid. I like to keep them in the freezer and I don't consume these as a snack. I consume them as a dessert after a meal and they're quite delicious. All right, here's the recipe. Number one, you can use one stick of butter. Now, I would use Kerrygold, and if you don't want to use the butter, you can use a half of a cup of either coconut oil or coconut butter. Number two, you're going to use two tablespoons of a, a really good sweetener, like 
xylitol or erythritol. I want to bring up your awareness on this one point. Um, when you look at some of the keto sweeteners, like stevia in the raw, for example, they put a lot of maltodextrin. So because certain sweeteners like monk fruit and stevia are super concentrated, super sweet, way more than sugar, a lot of times they'll add a filler to it. And the filler they usually use is either, you know, uh, maltodextrin or dextrin. So again, start reading the labels to make sure that you get the version that doesn't have these added things in it. All right, now you're gonna add some protein. You're gonna add one cup of either coconut flour, okay, or whole egg protein powder. Okay, you can get that online. That would be my best option. Or whey protein powder. Okay, so that's three ingredients. We're gonna go two more ingredients. The fourth one is nuts. I like to use crushed pecans, but you can use crushed walnuts, peanuts, almonds, whatever nut you wanna use. I usually put a cup in a baggie and I'll take like a rolling pin and I'll just kind of crush the nuts or I'll take a little hammer uh, and pound them so that it crushes the nuts. And then I'll take that and put it in the bowl. All right, last ingredient would be one cup of chocolate chips. Now, again, you're gonna have to read the ingredients of the chocolate chips. There's a couple of really good brands that uh, I would recommend. Um, the Keto Factory brand chocolate chips are good because they don't have any hidden maltodextrin. You have People's Keto Company brand. You have Lily's brand chocolate chips. They're, those are the semi-sweet baking chips. And then you have Nativo, which I really like their chips because it's just unsweetened chocolate with allulose, okay? Which is not a sugar alcohol, but it's a, a type of sugar that is very low on the glycemic index. Okay, so those are the five main ingredients, but we're gonna also add some minor ingredients. I'm not gonna count those as major ingredients. You're gonna put a pinch of sea salt into this and then also one teaspoon of vanilla extract, okay? You're gonna mix this really well, okay? And then you're gonna get a cookie sheet with some wax paper and then start forming these little bars. And then you're going to put it right in the freezer, okay? Within about probably three or four or five minutes, it's gonna be pretty hard. And then you can actually take it out. If you don't put it in the freezer or the refrigerator, it's going to melt on you because of the butter or the coconut oil. I've learned from my own mistakes. I keep them in the freezer and then I take it out. I don't know, maybe five minutes before I'm gonna eat it. And then I will eat it right after a meal. All right, so now that you know how to make your own protein bar, I think a, a really good video for you to watch would be the one on multidextrin I just mentioned which is titled The Worst Ingredient in the World. Check it out right here.